It started out as Allen Stanforth Theater, part of the Allen Theaters chain, and it was in the middle of nowhere at the time. In this video, I teamed up with Toronto actor and singer Noah Reed to talk about the history of the Danforth Music Hall. The facade of it is more or less the same. One of the cool things is that logo. Do you know what it says? AT. AT as in? Artists of Toronto. Artists, no, Allen's Theatre. Oh, there we go. So that's one of the <laughs> only kind of remaining things, but obviously the awning is new and stuff like that, but I really like that, the yeah, AT thing. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Hey, I'm Noah Reed. I'm here in the Danforth Music Hall with Old Toronto, and this is Every Day. Wait, wait, wait. We haven't talked about the history of the spot yet. P.S. Wait till the end of the video to hear Noah performing his tune every day. It was built by Jules and Jay Allen, two young brothers that by their late 20s had built and owned somewhere around 100 theaters. Others in Toronto being Allen's Bloor Theater, now Lee's Palace, the Parkdale Theater, and some of these. The theater, which started out during the silent film era, was built in 1919, but only because of this, the Prince Edward Viaduct, known by some as the Bloor Viaduct. You see, prior to the viaduct being finished in 1918, the Danforth was really, really difficult to get to. With the construction of the bridge came development, people, and the need for entertainment. Enter the Young Allen Brothers and their 1600 capacity theater. When we think of silent film theaters, we think of, uh, well, silence. But in reality, it was a far more theatrical, exuberant show than that. They branded the new Allen's Danforth Theater as Canada's first super suburban photo play palace. Wait, wait, wait. That sounds, I mean, that sounds kind of kinky. Anyways, on August 18th, 1919, Allen Stanforth Theater opened. They aired a 50 minute silent film titled, Through the Wrong Door. But the packed 1600 guests would also be presented with comedians and musicians. So the music theater now also started over hundred years ago with performers as well. Now. One of the reasons Jay and Jules Allen were able to have such immense success was because they had the exclusive Canadian rights to Paramount Films, aka where Mary Pickford films were, the most famous film actress of arguably all time. And she was born right here, 20 some odd years prior. Now the theater has such a cool history, Noah and I decided to take a look around. So, the sign there that says music hall, it would be a terrible idea if we went up there, because the roof is too high, I think. I don't know, I feel like we could manage it. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Go through this ceiling hole. There. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, just don't stand on the wood thing that I tried to stand on. We're on top of the Danforth Music Hall right now, and I'm absolutely terrified. I'm with Noah Reed. He's less terrified. Way less terrified. Yeah. This is nice, man. What a view. Amazing view. Little too high for me. <laughs> if you want to get really freaked out, just think about climbing that ladder. Oh. <laughs> yeah, if you want the real view, oh, that's where the real down is. <laughs> OK, I've had enough. <laughs> The Allen Theatre's chain went bankrupt in 1923. The theater was purchased by famous players, and for the following 50 plus years would be a multitude of cinemas. The Century, the Titania, the Titania Century. You see, when the theater was sold in the early 1970s, becoming the Titania, the Danforth had already become a major hub for the Greek community. The Titania showed Greek films, but also found a niche that would last for years, showing B-films and horror, as you can see from the show poster in 1971. 
1978, it would become the Music Hall and it would usher in the true live music era of the space. It would put on shows of all types, as well as still show films of all sorts of styles. By the early 2000s, things were falling apart, the space closing in 2004. But this marked a new era and major improvements. It would reopen in 2007, then under its current ownership in 2011. The awesome concerts and sound you see and hear now owe a substantial amount to the upgrades in sound and decor of the recent era. Since its reopening, the venue has seen everyone from Rihanna to Justin Bieber to Father John Misty to Billy Bragg. It also is the filming location of a whole bunch of films like Chicago 54 and who could forget the 2003 romantic comedy How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, which I'm proud to say I haven't seen unless it's the one with Heath Ledger on a high school thing and fuck I think it was. Here. You good? <laughs> so these old cranks are what the original chandeliers are on. Wow. That's amazing. So they're hooked through here. Yeah. So, so you just, bring them up when so, you when so to do maintenance? Them, we lower them. Oh, down I see. Yeah, I got you. Oh my god. <laughs> I love these kind of spaces. Yeah. They're so function, function based. Wow, oh, cool. Yeah, it used to be all this like old writing in here as well, but someone removed it. <laughs> um, this is just the big old AC unit, and then uh, it just repeats itself on the other side. Oh, Look cool. The wood. That yeah. Was original. Yeah. So My beautiful, man. Most things it's got to be original. Well, yeah, the structure. Yeah, That's so cool. There's a stool on the other side that I feel is from 1990. Oh my God, really? Every time I look in there, you pick it up, kind of blown away at how successful. It's kind of crazy, eh? She's like. By 1916, her guaranteed uh, salary on a film was hit over a million dollars. Jesus. Oh my god. I found the stool. Oh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure we found the stool. That stool's original. <laughs> that's the that's Allen says one of the Allen brothers' stool yeah, right yeah. there. He left it up here. Oh what are their names? Jewels? Yeah, Jewels and Oh, that's terrifying. It's a really high stool. <laughs> it's I think it's a table. It's too high. A table. Were the Allen brothers like eight feet tall? <laughs> Should have sat on this to do the song, that would be cool. Hey, I'm Noah Reed. I'm here in the Danforth Music Hall with Old Toronto, and this is Every Day. Picking up rust on the side of the track Thinking I'll never make my money back I can fill a novel with the I don't know Try to find a friend on the radio Looking in the mirror, feeling proud of the grays There's not a lot for me to celebrate these days I 
Roll another joint, but I can't get high. I'm trying to remember what I did last night, and the clouds are getting pretty as the sky gets dark. And wouldn't it be nice to take a walk in the park? I'm hungry for connection, but I don't wanna talk. I'd rather stand alone and burn a cardboard box and give myself a minute just to be upset than I try to breathe it out like a cigarette. Cause you know I'm pretty lucky and I shouldn't complain But I guess I kind of thought that things would pretty much stay the same And it's changing Got a lot to do but I'm always bored I wonder when they're handing out all the Darwin Awards All they say it's gonna change but we don't know when Man, I don't think that I can talk about it again And there's no one in the streets on a Friday night I hope that everybody's getting by alright So we just pop another bottle and roll the tape And meet me tonight out by the fire escape And the clouds are getting pretty as the sky gets dark It yeah, wouldn't it be nice to take a walk in the park I'm hungry for connection but I don't want to talk I'd rather stand with you and burn a cardboard box And we can take another minute just to reassess And we try to breathe it out like a cigarette Cause you know we're pretty lucky and we shouldn't complain But guess we kinda figured things would pretty much stay the same And now it's changing every day Every day Every day Every day Every day Now let me briefly digress. If you like Toronto history, please make sure to like this video, comment on it, share it, do all that stuff, and as always, tell all your friends. What? It wasn't? What was the one with Heath Ledger singing? 10 Things I Hate About You. How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, 10 Things I Hate About You. Pretty awesome, well, especially when people are lining up and stuff. It's like, you know, yeah. give them a little something. <laughs> That's great. I, I've seen so many shows here. I can't even really remember. I saw Glenn Hansard play here once. Uh, that was pretty awesome. We were sitting next to this girl who was had just bought the the last ticket, and she was like, "It's been my dream." She was like shaking. She was like, "It's my dream to like come and see Glenn Hansard and to sing." falling slowly with him and my buddy who I was sitting with knew him yeah, yeah, so he texted yeah. him before the show was like we're sitting next to this girl yeah, yeah. she wants to sing it with you any chance and he called her up he called her up and she almost lost her mind